Okay, once Inventor launches, we want to make sure that our project is set to our airfoil, and it is. And then we're going to go to Open, and here's our airfoil um, project that we started last class. We should have our 2x4 rectangle. So I'm going to go over here to this sketch, and I want to hit Edit sketch. I'm going to right click and edit sketch comes available. Now it allows me to work with this 2x4 rectangle. We're going to pull in the airfoil design that you selected uh, from your NASA foil sim experience and you want to make sure you select the one that's at a 10 degree attack angle. So I'm going to go to insert photo and um, if we look in IT airfoil and I'm borrowing a student's wing here. I'm going to bring in this file and I'm going to place it just to the outside of the rectangle. Don't place it right in the rectangle to start. Once you place it, hit the escape key and then we are going to start the process of scaling it and moving it into place. The goal is to have the leading edge of the airfoil at the front of the box and the tail end at the end of the box. If you hover over the corner of the photograph you can scale it by dragging. Try not to tilt it. We want to rotate it horizontal. And then by clicking in the middle, you can move it. So looks like I made mine. It's got to go a little bit bigger. Notice this is not quite at the edge of my box, so I'm going to scale it. Keep dragging. And now that airfoil pretty much fills up the blue box, so I'm good to go. The next step is to use the spline command and actually trace out the airfoil. Again, the center mouse button will allow you to scroll in. If you hold it down, you can pan. Now, the spline tool is a little tricky, so you want to follow these steps exactly. You're going to select the spline tool, and we're going to hover over the leading edge of your wing. Click once. Click once on the very top. Click again on the tail. Click once about maybe a third in. maybe two-thirds in right here click again and then make sure you're right over your starting point and click and if you did a nice job the green line should trace your airfoil hit the escape key a couple times to get out of the spline command and if you you're careful you can hover over these points that we've selected and if you drag them to the left or to the right and up and down you can reshape that spline so that it has closer approximation to your airfoil. Looks like my top point here wants to shift to the left and notice that that green line is getting much closer to the actual shape that I got from the NASA website. So play around with this a little while. It takes a little bit of practice and once you're happy you've got a shape that's pretty close representation and I would say that's acceptable to your airfoil, you can then hit Finish Sketch. Now we're going to extrude that shape. Now we have the box here and we don't want to delete that because we're going to need that when we create our upper and lower wing sections for um, the shop bot to cut this out of foam. But we want to see what the airfoil is going to look like. So we're going to go to Extrude. We're going to select just the airfoil. Notice it thinks I want to select the box. If I hover over the um, shape here, it's going to select the airfoil. And I want that to be 12 inches because that's the width of our wing. We hit OK, and you can see now, uh, if you select this, you can kind of move around and see what your airfoil is going to look like. All right. So the next thing to do is to save because we've done a good job here. And we already have this file, and this is our airfoil. We're going to make two copies of this now by doing a save as and we're going to make one that's the top and one that's going to be the bottom. I'm going to save those for two different lessons.